If you've watched the channel for any amount of time, you know that there are two things that I really, really like. Well, three. I like tabs, I like workspaces, and I like scratch pads. These are all things that allow me to keep things open pretty much all the time. And I know that a lot of people in the audience that watch my videos are very confused as to why I do these things and why my workflow has evolved in this manner. And I've talked about that in other videos. I don't really need to rehash that here. But the point is, is that when I have a browser open, I usually have somewhere around 60 tabs open. That's why I use tab groups in order to keep them somewhat organized. I do the same thing in Crusader. I have like 20 tabs open right now. It's kind of nuts. When it comes to workspaces, I usually have a plethora of different applications open. Usually I have several instances of a browser open. I have, you know, file managers and Discord and a whole bunch of other things open across multiple workspaces. And this workflow works for me. It's definitely something that I find myself attached to, something that I can't move away from. However, I have been exploring ways of consolidating things in some manner, and one of the ways I've decided to do that is take some of the things that I use that can be made into web apps and then make them into actual applications so that they can be used in applications that are kind of designed to manage web apps, things like Ferdium. If you don't know what Ferdium is, it looks like this. This is Ferdium right here, and basically what it does is it allows you to use web applications in a single application with tabs. So I have YouTube Studio here, I have TweetDeck, I have Mastodon, Google Keep, Pocket, and Telegram. All of these things used to be either a tab or a, an Electron app or something like that where I'd have to dedicate an actual workspace just for that one thing or have it off to the side of a workspace, whatever it happened to be, it was always taking up more space just because it was an individual application. Now, I've been using Ferdium now for uh, probably about two weeks and I'm really happy with it. It works really, really well. It does take up quite a bit of resources. So pretty much all the time it's taking up between two and 3% of my CPU usage, which is quite high for what this thing does, but I'm not hurting for CPU cycles, so I'm okay with that, but I could see why for some people who are maybe running this on a laptop, it wouldn't be for them. Now, just because I'm happy with this application doesn't mean that I am not looking for alternatives or things to try. So recently, while I was out trolling around the internet, I came across an application called Tangram. Now, Tangram looks like this. Now I'm going to turn my face off here so that I don't cover up anything here. But basically, it does the same thing that Ferdium does, only instead of having dedicated services that you can add, and then each of those services has kind of been developed in a way that they're, it's kind of suited for that service. With Tangram, everything is a custom application. So when you hit the plus button or you're in it for the first time, you're giving a page like this and you enter the web address. So in this case, I'm going to do TweetDeck, if I can spell, dot Twitter, dot com, and it's going to take me to that actual website. Basically what this is, is an actual browser. All it's doing is browsing to the website. And then you would sign in, so I'll sign into this here. And once you've logged in, you hit the done button. And basically what it then allows you to do is set a name, the home page that you're going to set as the actual home page of the application and then t tell what priority you want the notifications to be. You can also add a user agent which would mask what browser this is coming from. So I'm assuming this probably uses a Chromium backend and you could then use Firefox if you wanted to with the user agent. Hi there, Matt from the future here, or Editor Matt, if you will. Uh, there's a couple things in the video that I did not mention that I probably should have. So what you just heard me say was that it was based on Chromium, which I suppose is kind of true. Really, it's based on WebKit and GNOME Web. So it's not really a Chromium-based browser. The other thing that I didn't mention that I probably should have is that each tab that you can create in Tangram is persistent and is separate from all the other tabs. So basically what that means is that you could have multiple instances of t TweetDeck or multiple instances of a YouTube channel if you want. So if you manage multiple YouTube channels or if you mul manage multiple Facebook accounts, whatever happens to be, you can have those in separate tabs and they're not going to be connected like they wouldn't be. If you sign in on a regular browser to Google, you're going to be signed into Google on every tab that you open. With Tangram, you can sign into Google in one tab and then send into a different Google account in another. They're not going to be 
uh, connected in any way. So I just wanted to kind of break in and say those things just to make sure that I get all of the appropriate information out there without, you know, leaving anything out. So back to the video. I'm just going to leave that blank, hit done here. And then, as you can see, TweetDeck becomes one of the tabs I have down here along the bottom. So I also have Fostadon and Studio. So I can do that for every single application that I use on the internet. It can be any website you want at all. There is no limitation. So, so Ferdium does not have a limitation either, but it has a set of applications that you can choose from. So if I go back here to Ferdium and hit the plus button, you can see that there's a list of services here that it has. Now there's obviously a lot more services than just those few. And you can add any of those that you want. So let's just say I wanted to use to add a clubhouse one, right? It gives you options for notifications and audio and stuff like that. Also a built-in dark mode, which is nice. It also allows you if they don't support your service to add a custom one. So you could click on the plus button and then as you search through these, discover that they don't offer that service, you can then add a custom one, and it gives you the same basic options as a service that is supported. It works basically the same way. The only difference is, is that instead of having a nice clean interface like this up here at the top where there's no bar, if you have a custom application, you do have a URL bar up there at the top, which is a little bit annoying. It won't go away. That's about the only thing I really didn't like about Ferdium, other than the CPU usage. With Tangram, I'm not sure yet how it works in terms of resource usage, because I haven't been using it all that long. But everything is custom. There are no set applications for you to use. You just put in the URL and go through that little setup that I show you, and you're done. It adds it as a tab on the bottom. There are no extra settings for this application whatsoever, other than the ability to change where the tabs are. So you can change the tab position from top, left, right, or bottom. I prefer the bottom, but top also works just fine. The I think by default, they appear here, which is, I, I don't really consider that awesome. I, I guess if it would minimize down so it's just the icons, that would actually be really cool, so it's along the side there. But as it is, I don't find the left or the right all that useful or appealing so I preferred the bottom but other than that there are no settings here for you to set in fact there's no dark mode now I'm assuming that if you were to use this in a desktop environment it would follow your GTK theme for me it does not now some of that is probably because it's a flat pack I did go through and try to set the flat pack theme again for whatever reason it doesn't do it for every flat pack which I'm not sure why it's just one of those quirks of flat packs that is just kind of annoying but I couldn't get it to show up with a dark theme. So that's not that big of a deal, but it is something that you should keep in mind if you de decide to use this. Now, the only thing that I've noticed that I really don't like about this, other than the lack of the ability to theme it, is that it is pretty slow. When you close this application and then you open it back up, you can see that it takes quite a bit of time to actually load in the websites that you have selected. Now, Ferdium is also slow in this regard, but I had assumed that that was because I had like six services that it had to load. And it's not this slow. So that's definitely something that I notice is that it's not as fast as Ferdium. So that might be a deal breaker for me. So that is Tangram, a little browser that is meant to help you manage your web apps. And it is a nice little application. I don't think that I'm going to continue to use it, though, for two reasons. One, because, like I said, it's slow. Two, I don't really care for the inability to theme it. And three, because I really prefer the way that Ferdium allows you to set some of the settings for pr the individual applications that you create. So the ability to... Things like add a dark mode if the service doesn't offer a dark mode. Enable a progress bar if you want to. Things like manage how the notifications work. Enable things like uh, unread badges as well. Those things are important and really nice. So that's probably what's going to keep me using Ferdium for now. But Tangram was a nice experience. And there are some good things that I like about it. I like the ability to change where the tabs are. I'm not sure if that's something that you can do in Ferdium. I actually haven't looked. You can actually change where the tabs are in Ferdium as well. Although it looks like you only have the option between the side and the top, which is not great. I'd prefer these on the bottom, but whatever. At least you have that option. So 
that's the reason why I'm sticking with 4D. It has a ton of options and settings and stuff like that. And as everyone knows, I like tweaking things. So the ability to mess around with those settings is appealing to me, whereas Tangram doesn't actually have any settings. So that is it for me on this one. If you have thoughts on Tangram, you can leave those in the comment section below. I hope I did a well enough job of explaining this. I'm coming down with a little bit of a cold, so my brain is kind of all over the place, but that's kind of neither here nor there. So if you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I think I already said that. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast, just like all these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all amazing people. I truly do appreciate it. I can't even begin to say how much. Without you, the channel just would not be what it is today. So thank you for your support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.